Hey everybody, I'm Henry. This is Amy uh, behind the camera. Um, first off, I'm not a YouTube content creator. This is just a video I'm doing because I told a couple people I would do it. Um, so, we downsized from a 35 foot travel trailer to something we can haul behind our Jeep uh, when we head next uh, west next year out to Moab and uh, Death Valley and the like. And so this is our shakedown trip on it with our Cedar Ridge Vega XT. Uh, we ordered this from Cedar Ridge Campers down in Kentucky, geez, back in February, March, somewhere around that time frame. Um, and we just picked it up last weekend. Uh, and what is this? This is like August 16th, 17th. So I'll start back here at the galley. Um, obviously, you can see there's um, plenty of cabinet space. Uh, it's actually shocking more than I expected for space. Um, one of the things that stands out is the craftsmanship uh, with this. This is, uh, this is all made with uh, birch, but everything about this camper is so much different than the, the big uh, mass-produced trailers we used to, we used to buy. Um, everything's quality. Everything works well. Nothing broke the first trip, knock on wood. Um, but you can see here, you've got your basics. We've got the LED, dimmable LED lighting for in the evening. Uh, you've got some uh, 110 there and 12 volt power available. You got a water gauge uh, for your water tank. There's an 18 gallon stainless steel tank tucked up underneath um, and a voltage meter to tell you how your battery's doing. Uh, coming over here, we got our um, sink stove combo. Um, We've got a five gallon propane on-demand hot water heater. Um, and with the gray water, obviously there's no holding tanks on this. So with the gray water, we just have a five gallon bucket and we dump that, we're at a campground here. So we just dump it in their, uh, their wastewater receptacle. So far it's worked great. Um, you know, it's definitely something to get used to going from a 35 foot uh, trailer that's got all of the amenities um, down to something where you have to think about every inch of space that you're using and we're still trying to perfect this obviously we're at a campground we have water we have electricity um, so we're, we didn't go uh, super lightweight on this trip uh, but this is just so we can get used to this particular um, camper and setup and you know we'll learn as we go we've got another trip in a couple weeks to another campground um, so you can see here, um, it's got these rugged um, steel steps here, um, which is part of the basically rock slider system. Um, you can basically drag this anywhere the Jeep will take it. Um, the only thing I did notice, and I'll try to post up a picture of the underside of it, um, there is no real skid plate protection underneath. Um, so with that aluminum water tank, you got to be careful what you drag it over, uh, obviously. Um, you've got the stabilizer jacks there. I put them out, not really sure we even need them. Um, I may actually pull them off when we head out west because as far as departure angle goes, those are the, the thing that's going to hit um, as you're going over obstacles. So um, over here we've got the, um, and by the way, not we don't have to get too much into this, but thank you to Brad at Trail Recon. Um, I can't remember if this is the actual privacy tent he recommended, but we went with the uh, Reliance uh, little portable potty there, and uh, yeah, it's worked out great. They have bathrooms here, but we wanted to try this out for when we're boondocking. Uh, so over on this side, um, on that side, you have the stove and the sink that slides out. Over here, you've got a basically a cabinet. It's where we keep all of our dry goods, our bread, crackers, etc. Uh, and you can see here the full-size spare on the side. This is got 33-inch Dick Seapick um, Trail Country EXPs, I believe is what they are. Um, and it's got obviously a full-size spare. Uh, it came with Rome awning, which is great. We opted for the Rome awning room. Uh, we have it deployed. In this case, we didn't put the flooring out. There really wasn't any need for it. The weather forecast was for this, sunny and 80 uh, for the three days we're here. But uh, great awning, sets out really easy um, and is very convenient to have. So watch your step here, coming around here. 
this is a tent site, so it's a little tight here. Um, so we'll be pull, we pull this behind our Jeep. Um, the dry weight on this is 1,900 pounds. So fully loaded. We didn't have water in it, but fully loaded. It's probably 24, 2,500 pounds, and it hauled beautifully behind the Jeep. Um, so this is just the awning room. I'm not going to go in on this side. We'll go in from the other side and show you the interior of the camper. Uh, watch this cord here. So the hitch on this, um, it's got a, oh, I can't remember what it's called. I, I keep saying lock and roll, but that's not it. Uh, it's a max coupler, um, but basically it's a fully articulating hitch system. Uh, which is pretty handy. Uh, over here we've got uh, front, st really nice front storage box. Um, obviously we got the tray that slides out with 12 volt power for our refrigerator. Uh, we got one with the Rough Country. Um, waited for this for about four months to get delivered, and it finally came just in time. Uh, pretty good, a little small. So we're thinking. Or I'm thinking we might need to upgrade, but we'll see. Um, we, we obviously need to do a couple more shakedown trips, and and because as you can see here, this is Chucky Buck full. Uh, and there's room for storage on the other side. When this is slid all the way in, um, there's room over there for like the awning room uh, fits in there, no problem, and a couple other things. <clears throat> on the front, there's a rack. Um, and in our case, um, we bought, we have one of those large bins you get at a, you know, I suppose you can, Rome makes a nice box that you could put up there and we just strap that down, uh, for some extra storage space. Uh, you can see here, once again, the heavy duty sliders, um, and, oh, what was I going to say? Lost, lost my train of thought. Well, you got the storage racks up top. Um, so on our next trip, we'll have our kayaks up there. Um, so the interior, uh, oh, I guess I locked this door, uh, and the keys are around here somewhere. We'll come back to it. I'll grab the keys actually. Hold on. Um, yeah, and I'm doing this in a one take, sorry, but I'm not going to do any, uh, editing on this. So you can see here plenty of room um, it's basically a queen size bed it's got a four inch thick memory foam mattress um, this is a tri-fold so you can fold it up uh, and sit in here I guess you were camping in some really inclement weather um, but basically that's why we went with the awning room you can see you've got plenty of cabinet space up here I was actually quite surprised how much fit up there there's a little tray that pulls down you can set your iPad or your your laptop up there you want to hang out in here and watch TV. Plenty of outlets. Um, it's got great lighting. Actually, I should turn it on. Um, and it's got this um, Max fan um, that will basically suck you right up through the ceiling uh, when it's on high. Um, so it does a nice job of keeping it uh, comfortable in there. That's one of the big adjustments going from a you know, a 35 foot travel trailer with heat and air conditioning is getting the um, temperature right. You know, one minute you're sweating <laughs> in bed and the next minute when it drops down into the, you know, high 50s at night here or low 60s um, and you have the fan on, you're freezing. So that's one of the adjustments. That's probably the biggest adjustment is getting used to not having that constant temperature at night that's set in your big fancy um, motor home or fifth wheel um, so you know not much else really to show um, except the uh, you know the quality of the craftsmanship uh, this is all bed liner um, so it's painted in bed liner you can get uh, you don't have to get the bed liner finish on it but that's what we went with uh, it'll be interesting to see how durable that is but i think it's going to be pretty durable and yeah we also have a shower i mean obviously here at the campground we don't need it um, but we have an on-demand hot water heater and we can hook it up to the shower right now it's just hooked up uh, to the sink uh, for to use for dishwashing and so on so 
Uh, that's about it. I hope this was informative for somebody out there. Um, and this would probably be the last video in a series of one that I do. Thanks. Uh, we're back home and I decided to do a little uh, supplemental uh, video to tag on the end of the review of the camper um, because there were some things I forgot to mention. Um, number one, the suspension on this. It has the Timbrin HD 3500 pound axle suspension. Now on the Cedar Ridge website, it mentions that it has the that suspension with the two inch lift. Um, they're now not putting the two inch lift on there. And the reason behind that is this already has 18 inches of ground clearance and the kitchenette area, the counter space is already here. Uh, add a couple more inches to that and it gets to be a bit too high. Um, we also originally wanted to go with 35 inch tires, but we went with 33 inch tires. Altogether, we've got about 18 inches of ground clearance. Um, and you know, if you're gonna drag it up the Rubicon Trail, <clears throat> put a rock under one of the tires if you get to a spot where you need a little more ground clearance. But for the majority of camping, off-roading um, that people are gonna do with this, it should be fine. I mentioned earlier in the, in the previous video, the water tank. So the water tank, and I'll post some pictures, is tucked up into the frame, between the frame rails. It is encased in a hard aluminum shell, painted white. Um, so it's very durable. You could bounce that off some rocks. I uh, don't know how many times, but you could. Um, but there are a few risk points, and the risk points on this, um, once again, I'll show some pictures, are down this side of the, the camper, the driver's side. So you've got some electrical wiring um, that navigates under the frame up in this area. You've got the drain to the water tank, which is kind of behind where this tire is. You can't see it in the picture I took. And then in the rear, you have water lines and valves kind of behind where this tire is. So those are your, your risky points um, for crawling over rocks um, that you're gonna have on this camper. And like I said, you know, it's got plenty of ground clearance for what I think we're gonna do with it. Uh, if we ever do get in a situation where it looks like things might get a little tight rather than break off the drain uh, or crush a water pipe or valve, I'll just stick a rock or something under the tire. Uh, so that's it. That's just, I wanted to add that to the end of the video. Thank you.